。大変長らくお待たせをいたしました。Thank you very much also to, for you to be participating in the closing events and the award awarding ceremony for the I'm Possible Hackathon, despite your busy schedules. Firstly, as an opening act, we would like to invite DJ Mr. Kohei Kajiyama to give a performance. Mr. Kajiyama can operate the PC with his eyesight and play the instruments real time. Mr. Kajiyama, please. Thank you very much for that cool performance. If you watched the French performance at the Tokyo Paralympic Games, his performance may have reminded you. Of the same performance that was done on the French side. Thank you very much, Mr. Kajiyama. Now we would like to begin the closing events and the award ceremony for the I'm Possible Hakasan on the theme of disability. I am Eriko Uchiyama. I am the MC for this event. 
I am from the Industrial Promotion Team, Global Issues Department of the Nippon Foundation. Prior to the opening, close opening ceremony, we have a number of announcements. This event is available in Japanese and English simultaneous interpretation. Please click on the globe at the bottom of the screen and select the language of your choice. Please go to the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen and choose English. There is also available subtitles in both Japanese and English. If you click on the URL in the chat, you can select the language of your choice. As for the subtitle in English, it is also available from the subtitle setting at the bottom of the Zoom. In addition, we have available sign language interpretation in Japanese and Hebrew. As for the Hebrew sign language interpretation, please follow the instruction shown on the slide. Uh, this event will be recorded for archiving on a YouTube channel. I hope you understand on this other arrangement. Ja the Nippon Foundation and the Israeli Embassy have been working towards allow enabling all people to fulfill their potential regardless of disability. And we have organized the I'm Possible project to build a community to provide solutions to problems people with disability face and to support in such an output. For one and a half months since the opening, many people have energetically participated in this event. We would also like to thank the organizers, the partner organizations that have made this event possible. Thank you so much. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to invite from Nippon Foundation Global Issues Department, Mr. Ichiro Kabasawa to give an opening address. I would like to say a few words in Japanese. For a little over a month, uh, people from various fields gathered to bring their expertise and challenge it took up the challenge to, to pursue the possibility of new innovations. I saw the results of each team's work today, and they were all very interesting. So once again, I would like to thank you all for your participation and your cooperation. In particular, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the Embassy of Israel in Japan for working with us to make this event a success. Thank you very much. The Nippon Foundation has been supporting people with disabilities in Japan and abroad for more than half a century. It is one of the largest private organizations in the world that supports people with disabilities. For this summer's Tokyo Paralympics, we opened up one floor of the Nippon Foundation building for uh, six years to supplement uh, the uh, weak uh, secretariat functions of each of Japan's Paralympic Sports Federations. The secretariats of all the sports federations were based in the foundation building. More than 10 billion yen was contributed over the six year period to support the project. The Nippon Foundation has long focused on supporting the education of people with disabilities. However, this alone has not been enough to enable people with disabilities to work and participate uh, in society making the most of their abilities. In order for them to participate in the society, innovation is essential. Uh, we're keenly aware that uh, breakthroughs that are completely different from what we have seen so far are essential. That was exactly what this hackathon was uh, aiming for. New innovations will not be born only from the common sense of uh, existing players. I believe that it is only with different insights and perspectives that transcend sectors that innovate, uh, that innovative ideas can be born. 
the Nippon Foundation will continue to focus on realizing a society in which people with disabilities can participate in the society. We believe that the key to this will be the use of new technologies and cross-sector and cross-border. This event will not end today. In fact, I believe uh, it is starting today. The Nippon Foundation is looking forward to working with the people we met at this time to develop concrete new projects. I hope that those who participated in this hackathon will continue their relationship with the Nippon Foundation and take on the challenge of realizing a sustainable and diverse society through new methods of diversity and inclusion. On a day-to-day -day basis, The players, uh, organizations who are engaged in the various disabilities uh, in the world, and I realized that the world uh, is transforming. So I very much look forward to working with you to create something new. That's all. Mr. Kabasawa, thank you very much. Next, uh, we would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Gillard uh, Cohen, uh, the ambassador designate to Japan from the Embassy of Israel. So please. Mr. Ichiro Kabasawa, executive director of the Nippon Foundation. Ms. Lee Lapid, president of Shekel NPO and social activist. And for you, uh, for those of you who don't know, she is also the partner of the Israeli foreign minister who happens to be my boss, Mr. Yuval Wagner, founder of Access Israel, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Minasama Konichiwa, who is Satsu Deki Tahen Koides. I wish to congratulate all those from Japan and Israel who have been taking part in the I'm Possible Hackathon event. We all deserve to live in an accessible world and to have equal opportunities to be a fully functioning part of our society. Israel is home to some of the most interesting and cutting edge startup companies who are developing new technologies that change people's lives. They are incredible and inspiring NGOs doing significant work in the promotion and implementation of grassroots inclusivity efforts, developing new social models and impacting people's lives for the better. We wish to share this knowledge and at the same time learn from others around the world. We still have so much to learn and develop Thus, I'm very proud of this extraordinary effort led by our wonderful friends at the Nippon Foundation together with our embassy team. We wish to inspire people from both countries to create and develop assistive technologies and to share valuable knowledge and know-how relating to this very important topic. Well, you know, I, I said, I, I told yesterday to my wife that we are going to have this uh, hackathon, um, uh, disability hackathon here in, in uh, Japan. And she was very proud and moved. Uh, she has uh, two cousins who suffer from uh, a syndrome called uh, Bell Kostev, which is kind of a CP that is uh, uh, only for Iraqian uh, region uh, people coming. And it's uh, and and I was very proud of it. You know, if I'm just a new ambassador and an ambassador designate uh, here in Tokyo, and I had uh, only one week here. I'm still in quarantine, and uh, I tell you that I I I'm I'm so happy and moved by this event. Before I came here, I went to see several Israeli companies uh, working with Japan and uh, manufacturing things and. Uh, you know, I asked them, uh, who are your employees? Uh, tell me what's, you know, it, and I was very happy to hear that they are 
Jews and Arabs, but I was also very, very happy to, to hear and to listen and to know that Israeli companies have people with disabilities integrated in their system. And this was so important to me, and I'm so happy that we have it uh, here. Over the past few months, we have discovered the vast number of topics and issues we can promote and work on together in Japan and Israel in order to, mail, to make a real impact. Despite our societies being quite different, we have much to learn from one another and the ability to inspire each other to make the world we live in a more fair and inclusive one. Today, we mark the closing ceremony of this I'm Possible Hackathon event. But for us, this is just the beginning of a long path of collaboration between our two countries on this important topic. I wish to thank all those who have been working so hard on making this event possible. In quite challenging times, when face-to-face -face meetings and international travel are virtually impossible. First and foremost, the team at the Nippon Foundation for all their passion and dedication. And of course, to all our other inspiring partners from Israel and Japan. My appreciation goes to all those who have shared their wonderful ideas with us in the framework of this event. I look forward to seeing how each and every one of you will succeed in your efforts to further develop and promote your ideas. And finally, I would like to congratulate the winners of this hackathon that will shortly be announced. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much, Mr. Designate, Mr. Cohen. Uh, we will now like to start panel discussion. The theme uh, is uh, international cooperation in the development of new technologies. The speakers on this panel uh, will be Mr. Yuval Wagner, founder and chairman of Access uh, Israel, and Mrs. Lihi Lapid, uh, the wife of Minister for Foreign Affairs, and Mr. Raymond Tubin, founder of Hakatism, and also Mr. Isam Kajitani, senior researcher of the research team for functional robotics for human life, human extension research center of the IST, and also Ms. Tomoko Kitayama, director of the NPO I collaboration Kobe. The session will be moderated by Mr. Arie Rosen, uh, Child Affairs for Culture, Science and Technology, Embassy of Israel in Japan, and Mr. Yosuke Shikawa, team leader of the Inclusion Promotion Team of the Special Project Department of the Nippon Foundation. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you panelists, please turn on your video. The video is blocked. No, the video is blocked. Okay. For me also. <clears throat> Sorry, one moment. We're just uh, adjusting the video settings and we'll be with you right away. アリエさん、え、今ビデオいけそうですか?もう一度試していただけますか?オッケー。Yuval, okay. do you want to try again and Limon? Still don't talk. Okay, no. No, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, only not we'll arrange it the uh, we're arranging it as we speak. Um so good afternoon, good, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you for finding the time to be with us in this very uh, moving and important event. Um, as we both at the embassy and the Nippon Foundation see the success of this event, not uh, about what happens today, but about what happens tomorrow, we have decided together to uh, hold this panel discussion about uh, international collaborations, especially between Japan and Israel on the topic of uh, accessibility and inclusivity. 
So before, uh, without any further ado, I would like to uh, uh, introduce our uh, distinguished guest today. And uh, I would like to ask each one of them to take 60 seconds to uh, present themselves to the, the rest of the, the audience. So I would like to ask, please, uh, Ms. Tomoko Kitayama, uh, 60 seconds about yourself, please. NPO Hojin, I collaboration Kobe. I am Kitayama, president of I collaboration Kobe. I collaboration Kobe, based on the know how we have web and design systems, we develop universal design user interfaces and also conduct accessibility evaluation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kitayama san. Uh, next, from uh, Israel. I would like to ask uh, Ms. Lihi Lapid to introduce herself and give a short background, please. Hi, everybody. Wow, it's a, it's a very exciting day. Thank you for everybody. Arye and Gilad, congratulations. Uh, 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 it's very exciting to be here. I think the... Uh, after all this morning, I thought about it, uh, and I think there's a new nation in the world, maybe continent, of people with special needs. They have a lot of boundaries that close them from traveling, from doing many things, uh, but the, it's connecting everybody from every country. I think every, every person in wheelchair that knows another person in wheelchair, they have the same, um, they, they, the same um, uh, I don't know, um, way of, of, of living. Uh, I come here in, in few, uh, in few uh, hats, I think. Uh, one is uh, that I'm a, I'm a mother of a young woman with autism. Uh, with uh, very uh, um, difficult autism, she doesn't speak, but she we we discovered, and that's how I connect with this hackathon. We discovered a few years ago after she's twenty four now, um, she was the at the age of seventeen, I think. We we discovered that she knows how to read and how to write, which was a uh, an amazing, amazing breakthrough to our uh, connection with her. Uh, and that was due to technology, due to the possibility to write in a computer, to use iPad. Uh, I don't think we knew we, we would ever be able to know it. And, and for us, the first time that she wrote something to, to her father or to me about our relationship and about the way she feels. It's short sentences, sometimes two or three words. And, and it opens us a huge window into her soul. And since Yael is, is small, I'm, I'm participating in a lot of activity, but at the last few years, I'm mainly, a, uh, concentrating in, I'm, I'm a president of, uh, of a group that is dealing with uh, inclusion for, for um, adults in society, at work, at, at all the areas of our lives in order for them to live with us together. And I think what we saw here in this hackathon, uh, that each group there was something similar going a line that combined everybody is to help disabled people to be part of society and i think that what uh, uh, what this whole day is about and and there was such wonderful things from doing camping with friends to traveling in the world uh, to understand each other and to be able to drive. And uh, so it was an amazing, amazing day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. 
And, and I think we can bring a lot of change uh, to the world and a lot of connections uh, beyond any, any borders. So thank you everybody for this wonderful thank event. Thank you. And uh, just, just maybe for the Japanese audience, a few more words about uh, Lee Lapid. Lee Lapid is one of the most, uh, if I may say so, one of the most uh, well-known authors in Israel. Um, and uh, a very clear female voice in, uh, in Israeli society over the past years. Uh, and uh, later on during our discussion, we'll also ask uh, Lihi about some of the very uh, interesting models of inclusivity uh, that uh, are run by Shekel, the um, NPO that um, she is the president of. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Lihi. And uh, next, uh, I would like to go to Kajiyama-san um, for a short introduction, just so everyone knows uh, who you are. Kajiyama-san, are you with us? Uh, hello, everyone. I am Kaji, Mr. I am Kajitani. I'm working for a, a supportive technology, and um, in that role, I have the opportunity to participate in this panelist. I am very glad to be able to participate in this wonderful undertaking, and I'd like to thank all of you for allowing me to do so. So the theme of today's session is disability. I look forward to the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, Kajitani-san. Uh, for those in Israel, I will just say that AIST is one of the leading um, uh, academic institutions here in Japan. And so we see great importance in having a guest from uh, AIST in this discussion and uh, hope for, for future collaboration also between uh, academia uh, institutions here in Japan in this topic. Um, next, um, I would say the leading figure in Israel uh, in accessibility. I would last, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Wagner to uh, present himself. 60 seconds, please. Okay, I'm Yuval Wagner, and for the blind audience, I'm Caucasian, I'm tanned, I'm bald, I think I have a, a eyebrows and I have brown green eyes. I'm sitting on a wheelchair and I'm, a, I'm a paralyzed from my neck down. And for my job, I'm the chair and founder of Access Israel organization that promotes accessibility and inclusion in Israel and internationally, making the world in Israel accessible and usable and friendly for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Yuval. Yuval has been a, an amazing uh, force in this, uh, in organizing this event and uh, with all his knowledge and uh, support. Thank you very much, Yuval, and all your wonderful team. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Mr. Rimon uh, Tobin, who is um, uh, head of Hakotism, who has also been a, a very valuable pa uh, partner in this, um, in this project. Uh, Rimon, please uh, give us a short background about yourself and your activity. I'm Rimon uh, Tubin, founder of uh, Aquatism. Thank you, Leif and uh, Yuval, for being uh, such a good uh, partner. Aquatism is an ecosystem of uh, innovation, technology, and, and entrepreneurship. And uh, until a few months ago, I was a chief uh, technology and uh, innovation officer at an iTech company. And I decided to contribute my knowledge for the social uh, side. Uh, what we create, I tell you more later, is an ecosystem. I guess we may use uh, in this part specifically. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So I think we have uh, five uh, wonderful uh, panelists here. And we really want to, uh, the aim of this, I'm reminding everyone, is to be inspired for what, what it is we do tomorrow. Uh, and you are the people who are working on this, uh, both, uh, you know, especially us at the embassy, this isn't our area of, uh, our, our, our daily area, but uh, we see, as you heard the ambassador, we see great importance in this and we want to continue to support. So we want to be inspired by what it is that can be done and should be done, uh, especially in the international uh, collaboration area. And so I want to um, please ask you Val first, with all your experience, uh, please tell us 
what is the potential of uh, international collaboration in this field and what should be done? Taking into account that, for instance, Japan and Israel, we are two such different nations, such different societies. How can, how can international collaboration even work? Thank you. First of all, exciting event. And thank you very much, Nippon and the Israeli embassy for initiating such a great startup. Okay, this is amazing. And, and the, the question is great. First, we have to understand that we're all talking about 15% of the population all over the globe. It's called 1 billion people with disabilities. This is our challenge. It's not Israel challenge or Japan challenge. It's an international challenge that actually, actually Israel and Japan can be leading it, uh, thinking internationally. But we also talk about the elderly, which are another 11% of the population, which half of that is people with disabilities. So the, the target market is even bigger, but what a challenge. How do we take all those great ideas and make them actual working products and services improving our lives? And this is, this is the main challenge because this is only ideas or the beginning of ideas, but we have to see them implemented. And we understand that it needed all over the world in all the countries not only developed countries, but also undeveloped countries. And what's making it even more challenging is that each country, and we can see the great here between Israel and Japan, we have a different culture, we have different languages, we have different way of doing things. So the challenge get even more complicated because we have to make sure that we have to map all the challenges, then have a solution for that. And we're talking about technology solutions. And then we have to make sure they're also adjusted to the various cultures and also adjusted, adjusted to the various languages. So, wow, this is a mega project, okay? So it's much bigger than us as personals, as organizations, and as countries, that's why we work, we have to work on that all together. And this is the main, the main project that Access Israel initiated that making the future tech era fully accessible by design, fully accessible by design. It's not one technology or the other technology. You have to one second th think of all of those billion people living in all of those countries and now living in many, many areas of life in transportation, health, education, uh, uh, tourism, and, and etc. So, all the future technologies developed all over the world, we have to make sure they will be obligated to be accessible by design. And our challenge regarding this amazing event, and this is more important because we will see that we will have many problems that we don't have already solutions for them. And we actually have to develop them. And this is the role of hackathons and all kinds of initiatives pushing innovators and academics and, uh, and startups and technology companies to do things, to develop new solutions, to develop new technologies. So this is a start. And we at Access Israel, as we said, we, we made this network of making the future accessible by design. And we call all of you to join and let's work together and change the world and make it accessible for all by design. Arya, thank you very much and all your team and, and uh, Yoske and Nippon and Israelis. I'm excited about this event. So keep doing great work and we are with you. Thank you. Thanks Yuval. It's interesting this morning you shared with us, uh, we had a, an internal meeting and you shared with us that uh, 
earlier on in life you were a pilot and uh, it seems like uh, this is how you're looking at this topic from the from the cockpit seeing the whole big picture and seeing how we need to navigate our way uh, to make this uh, to make this uh, world really more accessible but you have this very global ability to see it in a very uh, a global way so this is a fascinating and very encouraging that we at the end of the day we're all human beings and we can work together despite cultural differences I just uh, want to thank add one, you i just want to add one word uh, about that I, you know as you know i had 22 years of experience leading uh, access israel and it's the issue of accessibility and inclusion it's a it's a movement it's a, a evaluation um, it's something that progressed. It started with the buildings and then the services, and, and now it gets into technologies and the future is product. It's a, so it's, it, it's a sequence. And it also, I just forgot to say one more thing. It's also about various disabilities. It's different solutions for physical, hearing, vision, cognitive, and we have here today also remote tubing that is leading this amazing hackotism that is more focused on autism that you'll hear later. So it's another challenging uh, 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 part, but let's say, uh, I must finish by that, together we can win it, okay? We just, we just have to uh, join forces and work together and let's, let's make it happen. Thank you. Yuval san, you have a bird's eye view on this matter and expecting a lot of engagement from Japan. Therefore, I would like to now invite Mr. Uh, Kajiyama, Kaji uh, Tani. So uh, he is currently uh, working at uh, the IST, and also uh, he is very active. Uh, in the assistive uh, technology uh, organization. So maybe you can brief us about your activities and the current situation in Japan and also your view on the international cooperation. Thank you very much for the introduction. I have prepared some material to share with you. So allow me to share the material with you. Can you hear the screen? Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, I can see the screen. My name is Kajitani from AIST. So I am participating in this panel discussion. So how can we collaborate internationally to develop new and better technologies? So we are discussing this topic first the mechanism of each country uh, to know, learn about the mechanism of each country and challenges of each country is quite important. So with regard to the assistive technology in Japan, from my viewpoint, I would like to um, explain the situation. So if you look at this slide, Are you, is everything okay? Uh, yes, please proceed. Uh, this slide shows the, the current state of assistive devices in Japan. And there are four negative attractors in Japan. And these four negative attractors makes expansion of assisted devices very difficult. On the left hand side at the top is a government led market. The second one on the right is self made. The third one at the bottom is outcome. And the last one on the right hand bottom is the legacy. And these negative attractors, they not only have negative aspects, but also have positive aspects. And these, as a result, do not go away, they persevere. And as a result, the development of new innovations is difficult. And for each 
I would like to explain each in turn. First, this is a government-led market. So in this market, the government takes often takes initiative and they provide public subsidies to companies. And on the, as shown on the left-hand side, sometimes people can obtain public support, which is a very good system. However, because this is a public support, it, it selects the type of devices that they will support. And as a result, there are limitations on the range of products or innovations that are eligible for subsidy. And in Japan, the decisions are diff made by different municipalities and they make different decisions and which makes a new initiative very difficult. The next one is handmade attractor. So what do I mean by handmade? A lot of people tend to want to create their own products. Or even if there is an existing product, they cannot find them. So they try to address the problem of, of people with disability. There are a lot of people like that. And this, in one sense, is a good thing because they feel empathy towards the people with disability. But on the other hand, sometimes they have difficulty selling their products and their experiences are limited. They do not have a network. And often experts should be involved, but in these cases, experts are not involved. And whether when the involvement of experts could have led to success, the project fails. The third attractor is an outcome attractor. And this is the outcome that focus, focuses too much on the particular individuals. And this focus is limited to particular individuals and therefore it does not work across other segments of society. So this, it, sometimes if it works, then it is okay, but only those particular individuals can use it, innovation. And also it is very difficult to accumulate new experiences and the focus is only limited to particular individuals. And for example, there might be existing products that are good enough and there are no interaction between them. And the last one is the legacy attractor. And in this industry, we have certain myth and fallacies. For example, if we depend on some kind of equipment, growth will be stored. And some people might say the assistive device are not of no use. And this, of course, looks at the past experience, which is a good thing. However, on the other hand, they look at the some of the some of the past experiences and that hinders new innovation. So we need to address these four elements in order to promote innovation in Japan. And lastly, as for hackathon activities in Japan, there are several already that has been implemented as shown in this slide. There is a needs idea forum. I like to now present this hackathon. Uh, this is a hackathon involving medical students and engineers. And they are all students and they try to address various challenges faced by people with disability through manufacturing various kinds of products and devices. And this hackathon is held every year. That is all for me. Thank you very much. Uh, so you pointed out some of the uh, uh, warning signs about the uh, situation in Japan. And the last uh, case study is about collaboration among students. And this is one thing that I've felt during this hackathon, that 
when we limit the participation into only one field, it is all, all it is very difficult. But we need to have a collaboration synergy between different fields. And that I think is a very interesting case study. Uh, Ariel, please. Sorry, the joys of uh, of COVID time being on mute. Uh, so next, I would like to go to uh, back to uh, Miss uh, Lee Lapid. Uh, are you with us? I can't see. Yes. Um, I would like to ask you a, a, a general question, but of course you are, you're welcome to uh, to take it in any direction. One, if you could tell us briefly about uh, Shekel and the aim of uh, Shekel, we were talking about the fact that uh, you see a great importance in promoting inclusivity for people, uh, 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 not only for adolescents, but also for young adults and uh, in different uh, frameworks of society. So um, if you could share a, a little bit about uh, that with us, that would be uh, much appreciated. Yeah, I, I, can, I can start from, from the other side. Uh, we opened last year the first uh, day uh, activity center for elderly people with special needs. Uh, I, I, I feel that we are doing a lot, a lot of progress with education, with kids, with new programs for, for, uh, for the kids on the spectrum and, uh, and uh, with a lot of co cognitivity problems. And when they become adults, we have less solutions than sending them, each one of them alone to, um, to work. And it's very difficult. So we have a lot of programs that are trying to, to help the, the adult person to work in a place, but to have the security and, and defense and fence that, and group that holds him and, and support him. So he doesn't go only one person in order to work uh, uh, in a big company all alone with his fears, with his difficulties. Um, uh, we have like a group of people with autism that works with Mobileye. I think maybe you heard about it. Uh, uh, so so we, we are trying to do a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of programs like that, that helps uh, adults or young adults uh, not, not to stay home, not to be alone, not to be just with people, other people with special needs. Um, I don't know how many of you know Israel very good, but, uh, but in Israel, uh, there is also, uh, we are serving in the army, uh, men and women, young men and young women. Uh, and and we, we, there is a program, it's not my, it's not my, uh, my group of people, but we are also including people with special needs in the army. Yuval is one of the people that uh, really was behind it at the beginning, and now we are we are having a lot of people that that are are part of it. So so uh, really, what my empathy is is I want to go to any supermarket and any mall and every exercise room and see people with special needs. There's, I, I wanna finish because I don't want to take too much of your time, but I wanna say that there was a survey in Israel that they asked parents if they want their kid to be um, afternoon in a, in a play event or something with, a, with someone with special needs and 89% of the people said they don't want. But I wanna tell you that kids, young kids treat it totally differently because at the last uh, 20 years, 
in every classroom in Israel, in every kindergarten, there we are doing a, a combination, and and there are kids with special need. And when when my daughter went to kindergarten, it wasn't a possibility for her to be with regular kids because it was divided. And now they are all together. So I think we are going to a future that can really really change so many people's life and if we are talking here about 15 or 20 percent of people that are in any kind of spectrum of, of disabilities it's a huge huge number and, uh, and so so it's it's wonderful to be here yeah. and to do it and and if we can uh, help each individual to to break the glass ceiling of himself uh, so we did something great so thank you everybody thanks i think uh, each one of these topics uh, deserve you know a day of discussion on its own for instance uh, inclusivity and in, uh, the education system and the question uh, who gets out who gets more from it the person with the child with a special need or the child the regular so called regular child and uh, i'm sure the regular children get uh, just as much as the 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 kids with the special needs as uh, you know it's it's such an important uh, stage which can really change the future of society yeah and i think something? i yeah. think if we look backwards on our lives so i think when we grew up most of you are younger than me but i'm saying when we when my generation was young we didn't see kids with special needs around us we didn't see them they were not around us. And now parents and, and society uh, is, is really uh, doing a lot of work in order for them to be with us as families and as society, so. Yeah. So visibility, another topic to talk about. And I know the Nippon Foundation uh, are doing so much, including the uh, visibility in arts for people with, uh, with disabilities and uh, and in Israel, we have amazing uh, organizations working on that, and it's uh, it's incredible. And uh, I would like to to move on to uh, to Rimon, um, and um, ask you to to go a bit deeper into your perspective on uh, technologies. How can technologies uh, support people not only with autism, which is maybe uh, your, your uh, focus field? But uh, I think you have a, a very a wider perspective on uh, on the topic. Uh, if you can give us an insight in how, once again, also from the perspective of international collaboration, how we should be treating it. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I have a 21 years old son, Yuval, with autism. I teach him to say not a disability. I teach him to say extrability. Singer, this is have a lot of uh, meaning. Uh, since I was a young child, I admire the Japanese culture. Uh, most of, your, of my career, I deal with the technology and innovation, and there is a lot of cross-domain innovation. Something that work for the biggest bank in Israel work quite the same for people with autism or other disability. Innovate uh, technology that work, AR, AR, uh, everything, uh, IR, AI, everything is work for the biggest credit card company in Israel and work the same for people with autism. So we are speaking now about cross domain culture, and I think it's work the same. The problem that Japanese uh, people have with disability are quite the same as Israel. There is a small uh, adoption. Uh, what I bring to the table is uh, thinking about ecosystem, not about uh, event. And what we do, we start with the hackathon, and then we take the venture, one year journey, including a lot of knowledge including help with pilot, including uh, tell them, help them with MVP, help them with investor. 
This is a make a double 10 the number of idea. I make double 10 the number of a chance to success. Rimon, I want, a, I want to ask you something. I want to, if I may interrupt one second, I want to ask you, you live with the son of a 21-year-old son. Yes. Obviously, you have a lot of motivation to leave your job and do what you're doing. And that is, I guess, it's because you saw the power of how technology can change your son's life or the life of people in similar conditions. Can you tell us a little bit about more about that? How, the, how big is the impact really of new technologies on, on people's lives? Uh, first of all, uh, the first aquatism uh, was for his 19th birthday. For example, sometimes he ran away. Uh, once uh, I found him in the safari in the middle of the night. You can put on him uh, something on his end or something that you can uh, track him. It helps very much uh, for uh, people. Sometimes you don't know how to finish uh, a job and move for the second uh, job. If you have a, re a reminder which we work on it, it will help him uh, a lot. Uh, some people with autism, when they don't sleep good at night, they don't know how to express it. If you put a specific uh, sensor, you can understand it. If people during the day say, what is a, how we actually act during the day, you can uh, use it to take it to another place. People, for example, you watch in the TV program for five years old people because they like cartoons. We have a venture that uh, take real uh, materials and make them look like cartoons so we can see stuff for his age. So it can change a lot in uh, what I plan uh, to do with uh, aquatism. As you say, there is a large spectrum of uh, people. I, wh what I try to create is a large spectrum of solution. And what we do right here is start a large scale uh, spectrum of extrabilities. If Every country uh, can contribute three to 10 venture every year to th this field of extra ability. In few years, we will change the world for good. Uh, yeah, amazing. The examples, the examples that you have just given, I think for myself and so many others, really bring it back down to earth to understand you know, the immediate needs and how these solutions can imagining each one of them how they can totally change your son's life and your life uh, so that's uh, that's really uh, incredible thanks for that uh, Limon. Uh, we want to move on to the to our next guest uh, ishikawa san hi thank you very much for that now I would like to call upon uh, Ms. Tomoko Kitayama. So, Kitayama-san, uh, you have acted, served as a mentor over a uh, little over a month. You have supervised or supported uh, multiple teams over a month. Not only that, you are representing I Collaboration Kobe. From the planning stage, uh, you have been um, offering consultation to us to this hackathon because i collaboration uh, kobe is an npa uh, who has already been implementing uh, similar hackathons and by accumulating the experiences they uh, sort of came to learn about the future steps and perhaps uh, you have some ideas around that uh, that you can share with us. So now we would like to call upon Ms. Uh, Kitayama to talk about your activities uh, in I Collaboration Kobe. And also if you have some uh, concrete ideas as to the uh, further steps uh, stemming out of this hackathon. 
This is Kitayama from iCollaboration Kobe. We are in BO. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk. I have prepared some slides. I would like to use my slides. I hope you can see that. First of all, we have a source for accessibility project. And I would like to ask for your cooperation in this project as, as well. Our collaboration, Kobe, that I mentioned during my self introduction, we have one president and 16 staff, of which 14 have disability. We are covered by various kinds of media. We also have various projects. And as for Ideathon Hackathon, uh, the title is Ideathon Hackathon to create our future, changing the world through product development. We were the first time it was organized in August 27, 18, to address the needs of people with visual disability. The second hackathon was on August 2019 to address the needs of people with physical disability. The third hackathon was held in October 2019 to address people with the problems of people with visual disability. And some of these uh, ideas have been commercialized. And I'd like to give some examples. The first example is by Shionogi Pharmaceutical Companies, a drug package, medicine package, uh, to address the needs of a totally blind person who could not understand the medicine labeling. And after one year, a new packaging labeling was developed uh, for this drug called CEDES. This is a second example. Now this is a, took only six months to a deliver a memo mail for people with low vision. And these products have been uh, remunerated by Amazon. And after one year, uh, that this has been a Google, Google Assistant version released. And this is the third example. Uh, this is for a totally blind person who wanted to walk independently in the railway railroad station platform. So we uh, build a mock-up and we learned that they were in Spain, there was an app, app, app called Navilens and we introduced this uh, app, app into Japan. And in doing so, we had a Zoom meeting with a neo cystic company in Spain. And we also uh, exchanged opinions with Spanish people with dis a physical disability. And we would like to go to travel to in Spain uh, as soon as the COVID-19 uh, ends. So uh, we have been conducting these idea film to explore new ideas and to build a sustainability in innovation development. And we, for this, we create a, a thing called Source Flexibility a, or SA. And we try through SA to commercialize new innovations for people with disability. So this is a framework from people with disability to, uh, and, uh, to companies. So we match people with disability and companies in order to promote commercialization of new ideas. And on the other hand, there's also a, a direction from where a companies would like to inquire with people with disability. What kind of problems do disability people have and these kind of issues that companies need to understand. 
And we have a network across Japan. An essay is a new project. It can take any format. We hope that companies and also Jap Nippon Foundation will cooperate in this project. So we use uh, not only Ideason and Hackathon, we have organized accessibility festival every year. And here, Microsoft and other companies have been acting as sponsors. And for this year, we organized a festival online and we advertised our SA products and services. And this is a new project, but we also have awards for Source for Accessibility. And not only for the participants, but also participants in Makerson, Hatason, and Israeli people, as well as all the participants in today's event. And if you would like to present, you can also present at our festival. So we hope that many companies will be involved. And eventually, we may want to build up our prize, grand prize to 1 million yen and company prize to 1,000 yen. And perhaps Nippon Foundation could assist in organizing such a large scale event. So we'll be happy if a Nippon Foundation would consider hosting such event. So that is all from me on the... And as for international collaboration, so at our company, we evaluate websites, we also develop systems, and we use a technique called LitHub. And this is a hosting by so, uh, developers of, of source codes, which can be shared across the platform. And this GitHub could be a part of a new solution in international collaboration. And although I'm not a developer, we do have engineers, so, and I do read their reports and look at their uh, new innovations. But even then, I will I need I need to use some commands in order to be able to install uh, these new innovations. And in this, we used a hackathon. We used a Discord, and a lot of people, even non-engineering people put up their ideas across boundaries to connect Japan and Israel for development of new ideas and products. So if this is a, I think it was a, lot, a major step in international collaboration in technological development. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ms. Katayama. Yes, as, as you mentioned, we have actually run out of time. And I think people are waiting to have the awards announced. And Ms. Kitayama has made a proposal on partnership just now. And specifically, We hope that we can have a concrete exchange of ideas, but not right now as we are running out of time, sorry. And we have had uh, opportunities to build new connections through this panel. So I'm sure you'll be able to connect with other panelists and participants. And uh, as we as Nippon Foundation, uh, one of our role is to become a hub of to build new networks. So we hope that you will utilize this role, our role, to realize your dreams and hopes. And we want to be a hub uh, in this kind of uh, network building. So please, uh, please do talk to us as well as with the Israeli embassy in trying to build this kind of new networks. So that is all from me. Uh, I'd now like to conclude uh, this panel discussion. Uh, thank, I'm very sorry that we ran out of time, but thank you very much for participating.
はい、えー、それでは、ただいまより、ハッカソンの表彰式を開催いたします。開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、開催に先立ちまして、Thank you very much. Thank you, Uchama san. So, just briefly,、uh, we would like to explain about the,、uh, the awards,、uh, the, the prizes. Before that,、uh, we have the participation of 39 mentors who are、uh, business、uh, producers, entrepreneurs. Programmers, engineers, designers,、uh, professors at universities.、Uh, also, they were、uh, experts in disability. Furthermore,、uh, in terms of the number of participants from Israel and also from Japan and from the world, we have the participation of the 21 teams in the end. The mentors, as well as the、uh, teams who participated in this hackathon. Thank you so much. The next page, please.、Uh, we, have, uh, we have with us, we've managed、uh, thankfully to gather an amazing team of、uh, judges, which、uh, adjourned this morning and、uh, together reached their、uh, conclusion regarding the winning teams. Uh, we would like to、uh, thank them and quickly、uh, introduce them.、Uh, representing HIT in Israel, which is one of the leading uh, uh, academic institutions, we had Tali Malach Banaim,、uh, an inspiring Israeli Paralympic、uh, athlete who was here in Tokyo just、uh, a few weeks ago to open our event after competing in the Paralympics, is Miss、uh, Pascal Berkovich. Um, thanks to the introduction of Zero Project, who have also been a very uh, uh, big supporter of this event, we have Igarashi Sensei from the University of Tsukuba, one of the leading universities, and a, a product designer and a great、uh, mind who is dealing with uh, uh, inclusivity and accessibility. Ah, sorry, please go back. Yeah. So, from DNP Business Partners, we had、uh, Ms. Ayako Hirai as a judge. So, the, about the,、uh, she has a long career in employment、uh, of the、uh, people with disabilities. And the DNP started out as a printing、uh, company, but now they are providing services and communication and other related technologies. So、uh, it has become a quite a big、uh, company in Japan.、Uh, we have with us Dr. Uh, Lihim uh, Mansano from the Bet Levinstein, which is one of the leading institutions in Israel for、uh, physical rehabilitation. Probably one of the leading in the world, and、uh, Miss Lihi Lapid, who you all、uh, heard and met just a few minutes ago. And、uh, Morisan,、uh, who is a, a director of Moris Incorporated,、uh, a very inspiring individual who has created over five companies.、Uh, He joined us also for the opening event, and、uh, we're very grateful for him being, us,、uh, being with us here today. Next, I would like to introduce Professor Sekine. Professor Sekine. Uh, is the uh, CEO and senior fellow of UDIT. 
in the area of accessibility. Uh, she has a long experience. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Yasuharu Sasaki, who is the creative director of Dentsu. At Dentsu, as a creative uh, director, uh, he's been very active and successful uh, in uh, creativity and technology. Uh, Takada Sensei, a great supporter of Israel Japan collaboration, mainly in the field of uh, life science, but uh, also in the field of innovation and academic relations. Uh, he's been a, a great uh, friend for many years and a, a judge on this panel. Uh, Mr. Rimon Tobin, who you all met, as well as Mr. Uh, Yuval Wagner, the chairman and uh, president of Access Israel. And uh, Mr. Yoshi Fuji is very known uh, uh, in this field. Uh, he is representing Ori Laboratory. He is uh, developing a proxy a robot. And uh, we have a relationship in our projects for some time. He's a very exciting person. And then finally, uh, we have Mr. Ichiro Kabasawa, the executive director of the Nippon Foundation, also performed as judge. Yeah, I would like to very briefly present the prizes. And we have some very good news here uh, for the participants. So first prize will be $5,000 uh, award to further developing the project. Uh, in addition to the opportunity of taking part in the Zero Project Conference of next year, which is uh, uh, maybe the best opportunity to present such projects uh, and creating the most powerful network for their development, and uh, um, as well as taking part in the Hakotism program for developing this project. Um, I'm very happy to say that uh, as we saw today, that uh, there are so many wonderful prizes. We managed to really last minute increase the prizes. And uh, the second prize will not only get the 500 uh, Amazon gift card, but also a $3,000 uh, award to further developing the project and the uh, opportunity of taking part in the Hakotism project. Uh, and the third prize will be receiving a $2,000 a grant for developing the project. In addition, as we saw, uh, we had such wonderful uh, projects in this hackathon. We have decided to give the two runner-ups in the fourth place, $1,000 each uh, to continue and uh, support and develop their ideas and hopefully uh, be able to take them to the next stage. Um, I'm very happy also to uh, announce that uh, Hakotism Israel, uh, following the, the judgment process, uh, has decided to give not only the first three prizes the opportunity of taking part in their Hakotism event, but also the two runner-ups in the fourth, um, in the fourth uh, place. So in all, all in all five groups, will be attending the Hakotism. And the last is a very interesting uh, prize, uh, the Shekulotov Award, um, best solution for uh, employment. And uh, we're very happy to be partnering with uh, Shekulotov, an amazing Israeli organization, and they have awarded, um, they have chosen one team to take part in their a, a special program for developing ideas in the area of employment. So those are our prizes. Hopefully they will uh, enable the teams to further develop the ideas. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Now, uh, we will now move on to learn about the prize for the first place Zero Project. Head of Civil Society Zero Project, uh, Sumit uh, Kuna Shakaran, uh, will be explaining about the Zero Project. Please. Is uh, Sumit Kuna Shakaran san with Hi. us? Hi, sorry, I was um, preparing my slides. Um, hi everyone, thank you so much for having the Zero Project um, on board this amazing, amazing initiative. Um, I'm happy to see some of very familiar faces from Access Israel as well as from the Nippon Foundation. So it's good to hear that we are all finally coming together um, to create something so amazing. Um, so welcome to the first place awardees as well. Um, so just a little bit about the Zero Project. It's an initiative of the Essel Foundation in Vienna. And we have been running for quite a few years now, and we've got an amazing database of about 4,000 different individuals within our networks. Um, we have very strong partnerships within the UN, with the ITU, and even within uh, the wider region of uh, Europe and Asia as well. And so in welcoming you guys into the Zero Project Conference, um, it will give you the opportunity to present your, your, your innovations to an incredible audience around the world. Um, also as part of the Zero Project Conference, we, do, we will also be including your innovations within our reports, which is uh, shared with everyone and it's on our website as well. And it's truly one of the leading, um, leading uh, publications that people go to and take a look at when they want to check out um, innovations in the disability sector all around the world. And as part of this, we also have the Zero Project Conference and we also have the Zero Project Dialogues within Austria in itself. Um, so every year we kind of uh, rotate within um, five different topics. We have education, we have employment, and for the upcoming year, we have accessibility after which we have independent living and political participation and we have ICT as well. So for those of you who aren't able to make it into this year's um, final uh, finalists, you are always welcome to present your projects um, for the years after that as well. Oh, sorry, was I not sharing my screen? Um, sorry about that. Um, and so carrying on, um, this is essentially a very quick cycle of um, how, the, how the conference takes place. We go through research, you can submit your nominations for your innovations. So for the rest of you, I do welcome you to submit your innovations for next year's cycle, um, where you'll go through an anonymous uh, voting process and you can also be a Zero Project awardee. And this will also give you the opportunity to present at the conference and build more um, partnerships and networks there. And so for my next slide, um, this is just a very quick overview of the kinds of innovations and practices and policies that we have. Right now we are working on a database that will eventually be released to, to the public. And so everyone uh, all around the world can actually um, log in and take a look at all sorts of innovations. And for every innovation that comes through the Zero Project, your, your project will be uploaded onto this database. So that's even more networking opportunities that you have right here. Um, and moving on, this, this is just roughly how the database would look like. It'll have information about your innovation, when it was started, how it was started, how people can get in touch with you. Um, it'll also include videos as well as any photos. So really people can get a whole, uh, a wholesome view of how your innovations will actually impact the disability world. Yes, and this is a little bit more. We also have the Zero Project video portal, which I'll be happy to share the link with Aria um, after, the con um, after this panel discussion. Um, so everyone can log in and take a look at a little, a little bit of the innovations that we have going on right now. And with that, I will wrap up my very quick spiel. Um, so thank you, everybody. I will also share my contact details with everyone um, following from this session so that you can also reach out to me with any questions that you have about the Zero Project or about the work that we do at all. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. 
えそれではいよいよ結果発表に移ります。Now, like、to present the awards. And first, we would like to announce the fourth place winner. We have two teams for the fourth place. The first one, Team 13, XO, and Team 17, STS. Now, I like, we'd like to show you the video for Team 13, XO. Disabled people are underrepresented in the tourism market. This is because finding information on accessible traveling services often proves to be difficult, costly, and time consuming, as many of the required information is unavailable, and the information that does exist mostly hard to reach to, unreliable, and insufficient. This problem affecting the tourism accessible market, which is no longer a niche, but rather a stigma that is approaching 25% of total tourism spend. Therefore, we have founded Excel, an app and a website which provide all the required, extensive, reliable, relevant information regarding accessible travel options and book accessible travel reservations, airports, flights, transportation, accommodation, restaurants, and tourist attraction worldwide. The user gets inside the app or the website, choose which country he wants to travel to, then he chooses the required service. For instance, an hotel, it sees all the required accessibility information about the hotel, the pool, and other services in the hotel. Then if he decides that he wants to order, he just click and order the service. They describe accessibility guarantees. We have created a launching soon page presenting the app, collected required data about user traveling experience through online survey and personal interviews. We have also conducted small pilot on social network where we offer planning and accessible vacation and receive many applications. Why now? Well, if you ask us, it should have happened a long time ago, but especially in the upcoming months, as coronavirus vaccination program expanded and people resume their traveling, this group of people can play an important role in the traveling industry post pandemic recovery. Also, promoting the scene accessible tourism is responsible and sustainable development policy that benefits not only people with disability and their families, but also countries, services, And to its attraction all over the world that can enhance the revenue and embrace all visitors. For now, we have connected with two initial partners, and these days we are meeting with more governments and tourist services for more partnerships and information. The accessibility data will be collected by accessibility survey, government information, and it will be verified by wisdom of crowd and people reviews. Accessibility information questions. Will pop up and the user will have to confirm reject accessibility's current information. Revenue model based on B2C commissions from users that book tourist services from XO and B2B direct commissions from the businesses without mediation. As opposed to the other players at the market, XO is the one and only to offer accessible, reliable, extensive, and up to date tourist services and attraction information from all over the world. For this upcoming year, we are planning to continue with product validation, partners recruitment, and collecting accessibility data. In three months, we will launch the pilot in Israel. And by the end of the year, we will launch the app. Thank you so much for everyone. Arigato. Team XOR の presentation 動画ご覧いただきました。That was the presentation from XOR. Next. We would like to invite, we like to show you the video for Team 17 STS. Change to sand. To be inflatable, light, easy to use, multi usage, wheelchair protective suits. On June 2019, an article was published about the difficulties wheelchair users experience. While traveling abroad, not only in most planes, toilets are not accessible, but also their personal wheelchair, which in most cases is customized, making the journey unprotected in the plane's belly, reaching the destination either in pieces or distorted. Can you imagine a group of basketball Paralympic players? 
getting the Witcher in pieces. Being a social aware person, I decided to try and solve the problem. I contacted Mr. Yuval Wagner, founder and president of Access Israel organization. He organized the walk following the wheelchair track in Bergurion Airport, observing the critical junction. It was rather obvious that if the wheelchair can wear a suit, it is then protected. Today, once sending a wheelchair, you have no idea in what state it will reach its destination. The idea is very simple. Once folding the wheelchair in order to send it, insert it into a double layer skin suit. Then, using a portable air pump, you inflate the volume between the two layers, just like you inflate a sea mattress. Now, well protected, the wheelchair is ready for its journey. Finally, land safely at the Rida International Airport. Thank you. チーム STS の動画をご覧いただきました。おめでとうございます。There, there for... Team STS, congratulations. We have a comment from Mr. Morris. He has a comment on the STS project. Please unmute yourself and turn on your camera to comment. Mr. Modi, are you there? Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, this is Modi speaking. Thank you. So I am also a wheelchair user and I travel overseas. And one time when I traveled to the United States, there was a there was a problem with my wheelchair after I arrived at the airport, and so because my wheelchair was custom made, this was a major problem for me. It was very difficult, and this suit, this protective suits, would make me feel much better when I go travel. And also, when one uses the electric wheelchair in Japan, often the containers are too small. So if this protective suit is available, we usually tend to place the wheelchair sideways, but we can lessen the shock that the wheelchair would receive if it is protected by this kind of suit. So I'm very much looking forward to this the innovation. And the other prize winner, I think, of course, there are a lot of travel information available and I would very much like to be able to use this uh, new device when I travel overseas. We do have problems with the toilet. So we need to know where the handicapped loo room is, exactly where and where the elevators are. So this kind of information is very important to us. So we hope that they will be able to provide us with such information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mori. So for Team XO and STS, if you are still online, would you like to comment the winners? Please press the raise your hand button to give a comment. And we would like to make you available for comment. If anyone from XOR or STS is still here with us, please raise your hand using the raise hand feature.
Do we see a hand raised? Um, yeah, it's a gift from Excel. Um, it's such an amazing uh, project that my partner Lior like sent me the, the Akaton and like I was surprised that um, Japan uh, embassy like want to do something like good a partnership in Israel. It's like it's warm our hearts to, to, to see and understand that all the cooperation and, and it's all the uh, accessible. It's not just in Israel, it's all over the world. And our mission is to make all the world uh, accessible and it will happen so day after day, but it's not, it's not about nothing. It's about just uh, people believe on our, uh, on our project and I don't care what price, I don't care what third, second, third place, but the only thing is that people believe in that, someone believe in that, and now we're just going to rise up. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you very much for your comment. I think we have another person hands raised. Next, we would like to announce the third place. The third place goes to team number six. Toki. Uh, now we'd like to show you the presentation video from the team Toki. As you can see, it's challenging to achieve effective two-way communication using these methods. Mishearing is common because the effectiveness of hearing aids can be limited. Also, these methods are often slow, and sometimes people might summarize too much of what they want to say, leading to loss of information. That's why we have built Talkie, a smartphone application that can make communication easier for people with speaking or hearing issues. The Talkie app includes three major features. First, we combine speech recognition and typing tool to improve this conversation experience. The user is able to type out what she wants to say in the same app. The text, when inputted by the user, will appear on the other half of the screen, making it easier for the other to read. Secondly, people with speaking or hearing issues can now talk confidently with our built-in text-to-speak features. This is especially useful when you're trying to talk to someone who is blind or having low vision, like elderly people. Sure, do you know what kind of pizza they have? Also, the text being read out is highlighted to provide instant visual feedback to the user. In addition, the output volume is adjusted automatically to the optimal level based on the surrounding noise. Thirdly, our app also has a white canvas which can come in handy when drawing is the better option. With these three major features integrated in one single app, Toki is an easy-to-use two-way communication tool, not only for the deaf or hard-of-hearing people, 
but also people with speech disorder, medical staff, caregiver for the elderly, and many more. The development for most of the features, except for speech recognition, had been completed, and we are planning to improve the app further by adding features such as predictive text, autocorrection, danger alert, and more. Thank you very much. So that was the presentation video by Team Toki. Congratulations from the judges. I would like to call upon the Professor Sekine of Adosha University to make a comment about the Toki's presentation. This is Sekine talking. Congratulations to the team. This is such a wonderful project. So the voice recognition, and also uh, you can use the drawing function. And also it's very flexible to address the needs of the various groups of people. I hope this will be realized. Thank you very much, Dr. Sekine, for your feedback. If we have people participating from the team, team Toki, would it possible to say a few words? If you are participating, please raise use the raise hand feature to notify us. So this application on a day-to-day -day basis, I use sign language to assist the communication, but at the convenience store, uh, you know, at the, you know, on the daily occasions, I encountered a case where sign language is not sufficient. So it would be very useful to have this app. So is for people with uh, uh, visual disabilities and other relevant disabilities, they would find it very convenient. And also not only sort of audio, uh, we, they helped uh, us uh, communicate uh, in a chat format so that we can also uh, communicate in text. So I also like to um, thank the older people who are involved in this project. Thank you very much for your comment. Now, we would like to announce the winner of the special prize, the Sheferotov Award. From the Sheferotov, uh, we have uh, Tao Neuberger and Effie Tolde Toledano to announce the uh, winning team. Please. Neuberger, Toledano, are you Carl, Carl, I think they want us to announce the winner. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Newberger and Mr. Toldano, please announce the winner. You, or you want to present before? Can, can we begin? Yes, please announce the team. Team name. Please announce the winner. You heard only in, in Japanese, but I will, I will I will begin. If there's something um, something else need to be said, then of course you can say. Um, so first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's a great great honor for us to be in this uh, this position here, and with, to hear such amazing amazing ideas and initiatives, and so many amazing people sharing the same vision. Of, um, of inclusion, of more equality between people uh, in different cultures. So, so first of all, thank you very much. Um, I will now maybe start with um, two, three minutes about us, so you know who Shekulotov is, and then I will move on to uh, tell about the, the, the movies we saw and the ideas we, we read about and, and who we chose. So uh, first of all, my name is Tal, I'm supported employment, a director in Shekulotov, 
and together with me is Effie, your turn. Hi, I'm Effie. I'm uh, doing uh, business development in the organization, and I was also part of the judgment. Yes. So Effie and me were the, the judges on behalf of uh, Shikulotov. So in short about us, Shikulotov is an um, Israeli NGO, a nonprofit uh, organization focusing mostly on uh, vocational uh, rehabilitation all around Israel, winners of the Zero Project from the UN 2017 and the IAUD Award um, 2020. Um, basically, what we do in, in Israel and most uh, other countries we work with, there is this famous uh, separation between sheltered employment for people with disability and supported employment. Sheltered meaning training units for people that still feel uh, or professionals think that they are still not ready for the open labor market. Supported employment means helping people with disability to find a job and retain a job in the open labor market. Uh, this is famous in many countries and two big uh, revolutions that we did. One is uh, that as our founder said, we built sheltered um, employment with no walls. That's that's the name he gave it, which means that if usually sheltered employment was hundreds of people, usually in remote areas, uh, doing simple manufacturing, we built sheltered uh, units that are located in um, not not only us, of course, us and other uh, initiative and creative organizations in Israel. We um, developed sheltered units that are located in the heart of the community, bookshops, clothing shops, selling, selling booths, and more. And this means that people, even when they are still in sheltered employment and feel not ready for labor market, they have the chance to meet people, that, not only people with disability, and to um, be active in all kinds of different um, vocational activities. That's one big change. The second big change is that we um, trying to uh, search for the word in English, um, we, we, we can say we deleted, uh, maybe that's not the right, right word, but that's what it means. We deleted this, this separation between sheltered employment and supported employment. Uh, we have a support, a very big supported employment service with 70 job, co 70 job coaches, but it's not a separate service in each one of our sheltered employment units there is necessarily at least one job coach, which is aim is every day to come to the sheltered uh, service to locate the people that feel ready to the labor market and help them find a job in the first normal labor market with contract and, and et cetera. So um, that is basically about us. I won't go on because we are, we are not subject. We, um, Effie and me were honored to uh, see the different um, ideas and initiatives. I have to say that it, it wasn't easy to choose. We saw many good ideas, not only, not some of them not dealing with employment, but offering a lot of amazing solutions uh, with studying at university and with um, transportation, even with flights, uh, dealing with flights and, um, and uh, communication between people uh, with, hearing or uh, seeing problems, many uh, very initiative and great ideas, and I hope all of them will be realized and, and make our world better, a better place. Uh, we had to choose and we are on, on the employment track, so we chose the idea that we uh, thought uh, that is the most suitable for, um, for, this, uh, for, for promoting more, uh, um, more inclusion in the first labor market, and we chose, just a minute, I'm just looking for the team number team, seven. Team number seven. We're very happy to announce it. Um, My community was the was the initiative uh, they talked about. And to say it short, um, team seven. My community. They they, uh, they aimed on improving the chances of more people with disability to find the job in the open labor market. And they uh, developed or are developing an advanced app, app which will help them, will, uh, is supposed to help the people with disability 
uh, first of all, define their, their goals in the open labor market, um, relate to important factors such as public transportation and um, flexibility in different job positions, communicate with potential uh, employers with uh, what we understood as advanced um, as strategies to help have better fitting between the person, uh, his, has, his aspirations, and also his barriers and disabilities, and the job positions in the open labor market. Uh, communicate with potential employers, and uh, also, which was very interesting, improve connections with other employees with similar by the same app, with similar, similar uh, challenges, and also possibility uh, to get support, online support, when they have any kind of problem in the job place from uh, all kinds of professional ex experts, vocational experts, mental health experts, etc. So we believe that this idea has a lot of potential. Also, of course, a lot of work still to be done and we wish them great luck in, in helping more inclusion of people with disability in the open labor markets. So good luck and thank you. Thank you very much. So the winner is a team seven, my community. Congratulations. Now, uh, we would like to uh, show you the uh, the presentation video of this team. One billion people or 15 of the world population experience some forms of disability. Through the interview, we got an insight that people with disabilities face socioeconomic challenges in employment. In short, the society tend to decide their jobs. This situation must be changing so that people with disability can freely search for the desired job which suits them with the advice of their peers and experts in order to spend a happier life. How can we solve the problem? The answer is my community. This is membership only community where people with a disability can gather to help them find employment. This is job board. You can indicate your disability status, skills, and range of activities, and also select job type, work location, and accommodations. Select the job you want, and you will be redirected to appropriate sections. The detail of the job are displayed. This is very unique offering. It matches job information with a disabled person's own resume and shows matching rate by score. This is matching rate. Distance from the nearest public transportation. It also informs if the job description indicates if it suits for people with certain disabilities. Persons with disability can discover the possibility with objective indicator without restriction from surrounding opinions. Communication tool between the members. You can communicate via chat so that you can easily ask advice with others. Event information. This is where meet up to build and ban community for training for upskilling. To support well-being for the person with a disability, this assists to connect qualified counselor and members. This helps them to contact, contact professional easily. This is screen for the entering company's job information, especially accommodation which they can provide is important information. My communities have four main features. Job board for seeking jobs, communication tool to connect with peers, events board for app skin, and counseling to connect with experts. We adapt premier model to sustain this business. My community is a holistic portal which encourages people with disability to take the first step for a new journey. Thank you very much. So that was the presentation video of my community team. If you have any participation from the team, my community, we would like to have your comment. 
Are there anyone, uh, is there anyone participating from my community? Please, if you do, please uh, use the raise hand feature. Uh, it seems no one is participating in this ceremony. Uh, I think we see a hand. Uh, we can hear you. Can I, can I, uh, can I say something? This is uh, uh, Mr. Toshiyuki Homa. Thank you very much for this award. Our team uh, consisting of three people from different nationalities. And uh, amongst us, there is no one with disability. So at the beginning, we have to be uh, try to be imaginative. And with the involvement of a mentors, uh, we tried to, uh, well, we conducted interviews of the people with disability who taught us a lot. And we tried to, uh, based on that information gathered, we uh, developed our presentation ideas. In Japan, uh, when it comes to employment of people with disability, we really need to raise awareness and understanding amongst the public. So I hope that with this app, app we can improve the situation certainly we cannot make a transformation overnight but hopefully this will provide some encouragement for people with disability to step forward by helping them to form a community so that's why we call we are calling this app my community i truly hope that the society will allow us to develop such an app and, and then develop more opportunities for employment of the people with disability. So thank you very much, uh, the team, my community, and the congratulations. Now uh, we would like to announce the winner of the second place. The, we would like to call upon Mr. Kawabasawa, who is the executive director of the Nippon Foundation, please announce the name of the team. Team 9, Sounds Direction. Team 9, Sounds Direction is the winner. So first, we would like to show you the presentation video of the Team 9, Sounds Direction. Congratulations. Making drivers safely. Sound direction. Team 9. Problem for hearing impaired. In Japan, it is now possible for hearing impaired people to obtain a driver's license. However, there are many problems for hearing impaired people in driving a car. In particular, it may be difficult to detect danger while driving because voice information is not included. Where come from? If you can't hear it, do you know where the police car will come from? X. Sometimes I couldn't actually hear the police orders and I was chased all the time without thinking of myself. In the US, there is a hearing impaired person who was shot and killed by a police officer because he could not hear the siren of a police car. That's why we thought of something that would allow us to drive safely without hearing. Sound direction. It's sound direction. This will indicate the direction and type of sound when the device recognizes an emergency vehicle. First, pick up the sound with the installed four-way microphone. When the microphone picks up the sound, the phase difference is examined to estimate the direction. It also discriminates sounds through machine learning. After the device analyzes the type and direction of the sound, the handle vibrates, at the same time, the monitor shows the type and direction of the emergency vehicle. Microphone. This is the main body of the device. There is a microphone inside the cover. Ease implementation. 1. No need to modify. 2. Easy to retrofit. 3. Attached to any car. 
In Korea, there was a POC with a similar product to Sound Direction, but it required major modifications to the car, such as changing the steering wheel. Vision? With such a device, it would be possible for hearing impaired people to drive safely without being chased by police cars. Sounds Direction is also useful for the elderly who are hard of hearing. This product is in demand all over the world. Development? Hearing impaired people are prone to careless mistakes such as forgetting to remove the key because they cannot hear the sound alert. We want to be able to take these measures as well. It seems that the mechanism for processing ambient sounds for autonomous driving is not well thought out. If this device can be developed successfully, it may give us insights that will enable safer autonomous driving. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. That was a presentation video from the winning team. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Kabasawa's comments on this presentation. So in Japan, we had we have enabled uh, people with hearing disability to be able to drive. We have new auto car models that allows people with hearing disability to drive. And I think that was a very good idea. And I think this particular project in that sense is a very good one too. And this is easily uh, implementable. And I think that is one key element of this project. And in this hackathon, we were we asked participants to come up with new ideas and products within a limited time frame, and in order to uh, meet the requirements of various regulations. And when we think about our efforts internationally, we think that this kind of efforts can have implications across the globe. And at Nippon Foundation, we have a project called Barrier 500, which is based in the United Kingdom. Two years ago, at a Davos conference, uh, it was born uh, from the out of the Davos conference two years ago. And we and they ask CEOs from top 500 companies around the world to Two, under the keyword of disability in inclusion in business. And under this keyword, to and ask the companies to employ people with disability and to promote diversity and inclusion. The other thing is that the people with disability make up about 15% of the world population which is about 1.5 billion people, which is the same size as the market in China and India. And when we think about this, and when we think about business for people with disability, uh, this kind of organization was built at the Davos conference and already CEOs from 500 companies, top companies around the world is participating. And in last months, there was a first online conference and at the center was from Japan. We had companies like Mr. Yoshida from Sony, as well as from BBC. We had the CEO from BBC participate and also Procter and Gamble CEO was there and from Deloitte Consulting was also there. So more than 10 CEOs participated on the same time to discuss about disability and business for two hours. And this uh, CEO, it's a group of 500 CEOs around the world, and it is a platform that focuses on a single issue. And for this kind of platform, it is very rare, this is unique in the world. There's nothing like it around the world that focuses on a single issue and that gathers 500 CEOs. And today around the world, 
we have the buzzword ESG investment or SDGs. And, and they are beginning to recognize the importance of disability and business. And in the extension, there is a network, a global network of major companies. And if we can build a project that have a general appeal, we can expand these projects across the globe. And this is one of the aims of a Nippon Foundation. And this is a start for us. And we would like to aim to be able to access uh, such global organizations for a greater expansion, extension and in building new innovations. So that is all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kawasawa. So if there are any participants from uh, team nine, uh, can we have your comments? Please raise your hands and we'd like to accept your comment. Are there any members from the team online? Please raise your hand for comment. Uh, my name is Kimura. Can you hear me? あの、えっと、ま、とりあえず、チーム何人さんのドリクション感覚的に Sometimes I feel scared driving. For example, that is like the police car, for example. And I would not know where the sound is coming from. And I really wanted to solve this kind of issue. So that was the starting point. And of course, there was an impression uh, the, I gave the actual uh, example of being chased by a police car. So it's kind of, I really did, did feel scared being chased by a police car. And to address this kind of real issues, and of course, we need to think about the issue of the budget as well, we need to balance that. But when we came up with this new idea, we were trying to make it very simple, and we are very happy that you have given us this award. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, congratulations for the team. And finally, we would like to announce the number one, the first place. We would like to ask Ambassador Desnick, uh, Mr. Gilad Cohen, to announce the winner. Okay, I'm going to announce the winner for the first place, but before I have to tell you that I'm so excited and moved by this incredible event, by this incredible hackathon. Uh, it's really a moving experience for me. It's the really the winning of the human spirit uh, of, of showing compassion, of showing how we should act as society. And I think these kind of events make us, make the mankind a better place to be in. So really thank you. And I think each and every one of you deserve a prize. I, I know that we cannot uh, share it with all, but each and every one of you has a special prize for me. Uh, and now to say who is the first uh, place. So the first prize go to, Team number 12, ADL. So congratulations.
チーム十二 A. D. L. の皆さん、おめでとうございます。Congratulations, team ADL. Now I would like to show you the presentation video for Team ADL. Hyper Muscle Potential Electric Wheelchair. It'll turn, it'll turn. Wheelchair is turning. He said to turn around and backward, but easy to say than done. The myoelectric interface, Templar. Bite down on your left back tooth. Left turn back left tooth left turn. Bite down on both of your back teeth and move forward. Capture the muscle potential of the temporalis muscle at the temple. Adjustable sensitivity for left and right. Explanation of the new contraption and rollers LCD touch panel muscle potential level display. How to operate an electric wheelchair. Maneuvering by biting the back teeth. Move forward. Bite both back teeth. Turn right on the spot. Biting the back right tooth. Sports day. Nice goal with the soccer ball and the electric chair. Curve driving. Getting in and out of elevators. Let's have fun with assistive technology. Can be easily operated by children. Drone operation. It is very fun to be able to move by myself. Just like me, to people who can't move, I want to deliver muscle potential. We believe that there are a number of children who can use muscle potential wheelchairs on a national scale, and we want to deliver muscle potential wheelchairs to them. The Assistec Design Lab ADL is a group of rehabilitation engineers who have come together under the slogan, It's Not Taboo, to develop and provide devices that use assistive technology. Thank you very much. That was the presentation video by Team ADL. We would like to call upon Ms. Pascal Abelkovich to make a comment on an ADL's presentation as a judge, please. Actually, as a person sitting in a wheelchair, I can tell you wheelchair can be real fun. And I advise all of you just to try and sit in a wheelchair and make some tricks because it's really nice. Um, if you like skateboard or rollerblades or anything, then you will like wheelchair. But of course, when you don't have your arms to move your wheelchair, it's less fun because you cannot do anything. You sit there uh, and you're stuck. So when I see this new um, uh, idea of using our muscles here to, uh, to move a wheelchair, I mean, it's amazing. It could be really a real, um, a real new thing that could help really people. I don't know how much it looks from the from the clip that it works well, but of course, I really well. I want to try it. That's that's the bottom line of it. I want to try it, and uh, I guess it's not so easy to do it and to move the wheelchair with a with your with your you know um, with your teeth and stuff, but. Um, uh, it could be really a, a breakthrough for, for a lot of people. Um, I guess it could be used to, to drive a car to or any, I mean, it could, it could be used for, for many things, not only for moving a wheelchair. That's how I see it. So it, 
really worth to help this team and and try to um, to um, help them improve improve this uh, amazing idea. Um, actually, I really wanted to ask from Maurice Sansei and uh, Yuval uh, Sansei <laughs> uh, what they because they are much more paralyzed than am I to hear from them how they see uh, this new um, breakthrough. But um, I really, um, I really want to now to to come to Japan to to try that. <laughs> so yeah, they really uh, deserve the first prize. <laughs> Pascal, -san, thank you very much for your comment. If uh, the members of the team ADL are participating, we would love to hear your comment. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. So rehabilitation engineering uh, is our specialty as a team, but uh, we knew uh, one boy with severe limb disability. When we met him, he was only 12, but now he is 20 years old. So he was working very, very hard to overcome various challenges. So together with this boy, we made a lot of improvements. The video, uh, the, uh, you saw the subtitle, orange subtitles. This boy actually you, uh, made that subtitle. Only using one channel, he used uh, uh, the mouse and to create the part of this video presentation. So his, he gave us a lot of power. Thank you. Sugimoto-san, thank you very much for your comment. Team ADL, once again, uh, congratulations. Team uh, ADL and also all the other teams who were selected as winners, congratulations. So uh, please uh, give a big round of applause to all the winners online. So this brings us to the end of the award ceremony of the Hakkasen, I'm possible. Sorry, we went over time. And also thank you for participating until the end. So with that, we would like to conclude this ceremony. Once again, thank you everyone for your participation.